Hello everybody and welcome to chapter number five. This is Professor Algarra in thermodynamics. Uh, this chapter is named as mass and energy analysis of control volumes. Uh, before I tell you anything about the chapter, I just want to remind you of what we cover in chapter number four, um, pretty much related with the specific heats for ideal gases. And, you know, we got to learn how to, you know, energy doesn't change when the states are identical and we cover important things. But now in chapter number five, we're gonna start introducing into engineering devices such as uh, diffusers, nozzles, heat exchangers, uh, pumps, turbines, things like that. We're gonna develop equations uh, to work with each one of them. And we're gonna learn how mass takes a huge play, um, a huge role into the energy analysis of the system. So, the conservation of mass principle is one of the most fundamental principles in nature. We are familiar with this principle and it, it is not difficult to understand. So pretty much, uh, you know, mass analysis takes place for chemical reactions, for thermodynamical analysis, for systems, for things like that. As you know, you know usually, you know, the energy is usually not always the energy is conserved. Um, it cannot be destroyed. You know, it only changed phases, but now um, we're going to study how mass carry energy into the system and how that energy is conserved throughout. A good example right here, you have two kilograms of H2 and then 16 of um, O2 and at the end you have 18 kilograms of water. So mass and volume flow rates for incompressible flow or even for compressible flow where uh, density is approximated as uniform across uh, the cross-sectional area. The mass flow and volume flow rates are given like this. You know, we all know this equation. This is a mass flow rate and this is the volume flow rate. Okay. I just wanted to remind you of those two important equations that can be used for any analysis. Uh, the mass and volume flow rates are related by this. Okay, so if I combine them both, then I will get another equation like this. And believe me, this is very important and is very useful when doing analysis. Again, those, those equations were introduced in chapter number two. And so far, we should have uh, quite a few experience working with them. So what is the conservation of mass principle? Let's just read it. Okay, conservation of mass principle for a control volume. The net mass transfer... Uh, to or from a control volume during a time interval delta t is equal to the net change, increase or decrease in the total mass within the control volume during delta t. So, like I've always told you, there is a lot of different concepts and terms that need to be read at least two or three times in order to fully understand. But if you didn't understand uh, what I just mentioned, just take a look at this equation right here because this is the whole thing. The whole mass entering, you know, the control volume minus the mass leaving the control volume should be equal to the net of mass that is staying. If you think about it, about the energy analysis that we had before, just, just try to remember everything that comes in minus everything that comes out will be equal to the change of energy in the system. So it's the same equation, but now we're just focusing on the mass. So if you take a look at this, mass in minus mass out, it's equal to the delta of the mass. <clears throat> it could also be put as this, like, you know, the final mass minus the initial mass will be will tell you exactly what that is. And it's the same equation. So this equation, it's equal to that one. So this one, it's equal to this one. It's just two different ways of putting it together. And the equation right here, I'm sorry for this symbol, but it's, it's just mass in minus mass out it's pretty much telling you how much the mass will change with the time. Respect to the time. And this is kilograms per second. These equations are often referred to as the mass balance and are applicable to any control volume undergoing any kind of process. Okay, this is quite important, guys, and you'll see why. So if you take a look at this picture, you have 50 kilograms of water coming into my control volume. I'm sorry, in, coming into my control volume and then I have 30 kilograms coming out. So if I go and mass coming in minus mass coming out, I get 
the total of mass that is uh, inside of the bathtub. This is just a quick picture. So, like I said, super simple, everything that comes in minus everything that comes out, it's equal to the net change of mass within the control volume during delta T. So mass balance for a steady flow processes. During a steady flow process, the total amount of mass contained within a control volume does not change with time. That means that the mass always remains constant. And remember, your control volume will be given by the boundaries, as you can see it on the picture. Okay, the red dotted. So the, the sum of all the mass coming in will be equal to the sum of mass coming out. So many engineering devices such as nozzle diffusers, turbines, compressors, and pumps, they always work through the same principle. That's why this is quite important, okay? So the mass that comes in will be equal to the mass, com to the mass comes coming out. So I have two kilograms per second, this is a mass flow rate coming into my control volume, and a mass flow rate two of three kilograms per second coming on this side. So what's coming out will be the sum of both of them. Okay? So, what happened now? Now we're gonna talk about the flow work in the energy of a, of a flowing fluid. So far until now, we've been just focusing on the energy that the system will carry in terms of properties. Okay, so far that's what we've learned. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to include how mass will take a role into this new equation of energy. Unlike closed systems, control volume involves mass flow across their boundaries and some work is required to push the mass into or out of the control volume. This work is known as the flow work or flow energy and it is necessary to maintain a continuous flow throughout the control volume. So just take a look at this picture, this picture right here, please. Okay, so we have a force that is being applied to the piston. Okay, that's a piston. In order to push this square of water into my control volume. That square of water, it's carrying, it is carrying energy with it that it'll go inside of my control volume. I'm just trying to picture what's coming. Okay. So that mass or that square of water has been pushed by the imaginary piston into my control volume. And therefore I have something moving into the side, but that's not important. Why is this important? We know that force is equals to pressure area. This guy comes from pressure, it's equals to what? Force over area. So if I solve for force, then I get that force is equals to PA. Workflow, okay, or work, it's equals to force times displacement. If I take a look at the previous one, my displacement is given by L because I'm pushing and I'm moving the square L units into my control volume. So force times displacement will be this guy right here. So now I'm going to put where force is PA because force is equal to PA and now I have PA times L and L is a displacement. What happened with the area times displacement? It's just a volume, okay? So now my workflow will be equal to pressure times volume. Sorry about that again. So my workflow will be equal to pressure times the volume and that will be in kilojoules. Okay, so now that that amount of water, it's carrying energy into my control volume and I'm putting that energy thanks to the workflow. All right, so at the end workflow or work of a flowing fluid, it's equal to P, B in kilojoules. If you want to express it in terms of you know, per unit mass, you can say that the workflow of a, of a flowing fluid, it's equals to P specific volume. 
and this guy it's in kilojoules per kilograms all right so far so good okay simple just using the the equation of work and putting force into that equation in order to develop you know the work the flow work or the or the energy of a working fluid or of a flowing fluid but this is the most important thing the total energy of a flowing fluid so in the past we knew that that energy is carried by this now we're going to be introduced to something different which is theta and it's this guy right here theta will be equals to the energy that we had before that we've been studying which is internal energy kinetic energy and potential energy internal energy kinetic energy and potential energy but now we're going to add the new work or the new energy which is the mass energy the energy carried by the mass okay and that energy we just learned that it's equal to p times b so my new theta will be equals to the energy that we knew before that we've been studying for so far four chapters plus the energy of the mass which is carried by the work of a flowing fluid pb so if i develop the equation i know that the energy is equal to internal energy kinetic energy and potential energy and now the new one which is pb that will be my new equation of energy but let me develop this a little bit more or simplify the equation what do we know about h h is equal to u plus pv you all know that from previous chapter so if i take my u right here take a look and pv right here that's enthalpy so now theta will be equals to enthalpy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy which is this equation right here. And if I want to develop this a little more, kinetic energy, it's V squared over two, and then potential energy, it's gravity times height, okay? So pretty simple, it's a new equation. The only thing we did, it was just to add the energy that the mass was carrying into the system. All right, moving on. At the end, this is my final equation. I want you to remember this equation because we're gonna be using that equation for um, the engineering devices that we are about to develop, okay? So if you take a look at this picture right here, figure uh, 515, the total energy consists of three parts for a non-flowing fluid and four parts for a flowing fluid. Okay, before we started this guy, we all knew this one. Energy is equal to internal energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy. So now when we have a flowing fluid, you know, a fluid that is going through my control volume, now I'm gonna have the flow energy that needs to be taken care of, okay? That flow energy, so the flowing fluid will be equal to flow energy plus internal energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy. So guys, remember that because it's quite important. So now we're going to start defining steady flow processes. Okay, so steady flow process is a process during which a fluid flows through a control volume steadily. Okay, many engineering systems such as power, such as power plants will operate under steady conditions. Guys, like I said at the beginning, this is one of the best chapters, okay? And I'm not lying to you, They're, it's very informative and, and this is the base, the base for engineering in thermodynamics too, pretty much, okay? So, a large number of engineering devices such as turbine compressors and nozzles operate for a long period of time under the same conditions once the transit the startup period is completed and the steady operation is established and they are classified and they are classified as steady flow devices so what is important part of this whole process that the mass balance for a general steady flow system is given like this the mass flow coming in it's equal to the mass flow coming out 
During a steady flow process, the total energy content of a control volume remains constant. Okay, these two things, number one and number two, are the most important thing when studying engineering devices. Okay, just remember that the mass flow uh, rate coming in is equal to the mass flow rate coming out uh, and also the energy coming in is the same as energy coming out. And we're going to start by defining uh, the different engineering devices that we deal with in thermodynamics. Okay, um, I'm going to start giving you information about those devices, uh, you know, whether heat is close to zero, work close to zero or not. Uh, delta PE, delta key, all that information that is given. So nozzles and diffusers are shaped so they uh, cause large changes in fluid velocities and therefore kinetic energy. Okay, so nozzles and diffusers are commonly utilized in jet engines, rockets, spacecraft, and even garden hoses. A nozzle is a device, take a look at this, a nozzle is a device that increases the velocity of a fluid at expense of pressure. A diffuser is a device that increases the pressure of a fluid by slowing it down. The cross-sectional area of a nozzle decreases in the flow direction uh, for subsonic flows and increases for supersonic flows. The reverse is true for diffusers. Uh, the energy balance for um, nozzles and diffusers is pretty much, you know, energy that comes in, it's equal to the energy that comes out, okay, or the rate. All right, but the question would be, okay, how do I play with them and exactly how do I work with them? So nozzles and diffusers, they're, they pretty much work in the opposite way. So when you're using, like I said, a nozzle, um, you will increase the velocity of a fluid at expense of the pressure and the diffuser will do the opposite of that. Okay, but both of them will work under the same equations, under the same char characteristics uh, to just use uh, for different applications. Whether you want to increase the velocity or not, or the pressure or not, then you will use um, you know, nozzles or diffusers. So what do we know about nozzles and diffusers? So Q, it's pretty much close to zero. The workflow rate, it's also close to zero. My delta PE is also close to zero. So then if I keep using the equations, I have that the energy that comes in, it's equals to the energy that comes out. If you want to be a little bit more specific, I'm going to say that the theta one is equal to the theta two. But if I multiply this by the mass flow rate, I can always do that. Okay, so I have a quick question for you. So which units am I going to get uh, if I use those equations? Kilojoules per kilogram, kilograms per second, or kilowatts. So I'm, a, I'm just going to do a little bit of analysis before I keep moving on. So you know that theta, the units are kilo joules per kilograms. Hopefully I'm not mistaken. The mass flow rate, it's kilograms per seconds. The theta, it's kilo joules per kilograms. They will cancel out and you will get kilojoules per second, which is equal to kilowatts. So the multiplication of this guy should be equal to kilowatts. And you can do that every time when working with engineering, you know, with thermodynamics. But anyways, that was not important. I just wanted to tell you that. So I'm going to use the equation right here in order to develop uh, the general equation for nozzles and diffusers. In nozzles and diffusers, the mass flow rate coming in, it's equal to the mass flow rate coming out. And I could call this just a regular mass flow rate. And if they are the same, I can cancel them out. And I'm just going to get the theta one, it's equals to theta two. Okay, if you remember what theta was equal to, let's just go back. Okay, so theta was equals to enthalpy plus, um, you know, kinetic energy, potential energy. So I'm just gonna go back start writing my equation. So enthalpy one 
plus kinetic energy one plus potential energy one, it's equals to enthalpy two, kinetic energy two, and potential energy two, okay? What do we know? That the delta PE will be equal to zero, so these guys can cancel out, and at the end, I'm only getting enthalpy and kinetic energy. So H1 plus V1 to the square divided by two, it's equals to H2 plus V2 to the square divided by two. And that's my general equation for nozzles and diffusers. Moving on, so now we get turbines and compressors. So pretty much uh, they work in a similar way okay they just do uh, different things for example the compressor will require you know energy in order to work and the turbine will generate energy that's pretty much the two difference between them both but if we keep a general equation we could as you know using the same the same thermodynamics signs such as you know everything that comes in minus everything that comes out in one case um you know the work will be required in the other case the work the work would be given by the system but anyways a turbine drives the electric generate generator in a steam gas or hydroelectric hydroelectric power plants as the fluid passes through the turbine work is done against the blades which are attached to the shaft as a result the shaft rotates and the turbine produces work compressors as well as pumps and fan and fans are devices used to increase the pressure of a fluid, work is supplied to these devices from an external source through a rotating shaft. A fan, a fan increases the pressure of a gas slightly and is mainly used to mobilize a gas. A compressor is capable of compressing the gas to very high pressures and the pumps work very much like compressors except that they handle liquids instead of gases. Well, like I said, compressors, um, you know, compressors, fan, pumps, uh, they work in a similar way of turbines and we, it's very convenient that we, uh, you know, analyze them together. So pretty much I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to give information what they are. And one important thing, guys, as I'm adding, you know, information about the different engineering devices really worth it that you write down everything I'm writing on the whiteboard right now because that's what you need in order to work with these exercises. So when you have a turbine, you will have to remember what I'm telling you. When you have a nozzle or diffuser, then you will have to use the equations that we previously developed. All right, so moving on, we have the four turbines. Okay, so for turbines, for turbines, we know that the rate of heat it's pretty much or close to zero. The delta, guys, I mean potential energy, yes, they do have, uh, but what I'm talking about the delta is that the change it's almost neglectable. Okay, so the delta of PE it's close to zero. So now I'm gonna use the same equation, the flow of the energy that comes in will be equal to the flow of energy that comes out. Uh, we also know that the mass flow rate one, it's equal to the mass flow rate at the exit. And we're going to call that just a mass flow rate. In this case, I'm not going to cancel the mass flow rate because we have the power of the turbine involved into the equation. So if I want to keep adding or using or subtracting apples plus apples, uh, then I need uh, my mass flow rate in order to keep consistent with the units. So, what would it be? I have the mass that comes in will be like this, mass flow rate that multiplies H1 plus V1 to the square divided by two plus GZ1, okay? And this is equals, this is everything that comes into the turbines. 
So what's coming out into the turbine? So let's call it the mass flow rate that multiplies H2 plus B2 to the square divided by 2 plus GZ2. What else? What else? I mean, that would be the question, right? The answer to that question would be that the turbine will produce work. Okay, so if, if the turbine is producing work, that means that the work, it's coming out of your system. So now I need to go plus the work or the work rate that is coming out, the power that is coming out. So everything will be in kilowatts. So this whole thing will be kilowatts, kilowatts, kilowatts. Perfect, we can, we can perfectly work with this equation. So this guy, as I said it, it's equal to zero because there's no change in the potential energy. Okay, I mean, this guy is not equal to zero. Let me just put it better. PE1, it's equals to PE2. Therefore, delta PE, it's equals to zero. So I don't want to say that this guy, it's equals to zero. Just PE1 minus P, uh, PE2 minus PE1 is just equals to zero because they're identical. So if I keep just writing the equation, I will get the following one, finally. Mass flow rate that multiplies H1 plus B1 to the square divided by two. H equals two. Work out. Sorry. Okay. Work out plus mass flow rate that multiplies H2 plus V2 to the square divided by 2. Okay, so this is going to be for turbines, and so now we're going with the compressors. So now that we've been developing the turbine equations, we're going to move to compressors and, and fans and everything. Um, something very important about this equation. So like I said, this is the general equation for turbines. Sometimes, but just sometimes, okay, it's not all the time, delta Ke could also be close to zero. When can I assume this and when can... Uh, when can't I assume this? So if you're giving with velocities, okay, because the exercise was uh, giving you velocities at the, at the entrance and the outside of the turbine, then you will have to use a general equation. But let's say they don't give you any information about velocities. You could assume that the delta key E is close to zero. The change in kinetic energy is close to zero. And therefore, the equation, this equation right here will, simply, will simplify even more. Okay. But those are just, um, you know, pretty much cases that could be given. And I just want to mention that to you. All right. So let's just delete everything right here. Perfect. So for, for compressors, okay, compressors, pump, pumps, they will work in a similar manner. So now we know that delta PE is close to zero. Delta PE in this case is also considered close to zero. In this one, they most of them, they're adiabatic, so the rate of heat is also close to zero. So if I use the same equation, the rate of energy that comes in, it's equal to the energy that comes out. And I'm going to use the same equation, and the same thing applies. So mass flow rate one is equal to the mass flow rate two, it's equal to mass flow rate. Cool. All right, so now what I have, it's pretty much mass flow rate that multiplies H1 plus Let's say key E1 plus PE1. What happened with the compressors? The compressors will require energy. Therefore, the work will be coming into your system. And the turbines was different. The turbines, the work was produced by the system. 
in compressors, pumps, all of them, they will require power. So now I need to add a work coming into my system. And this guy, it's equal to mass flow rate of H2 plus, let's call it key E2 plus PE2. Okay, what happened? So delta PE, delta key E, it's equal to zero. So I can cancel this with this two. And my equation will be simplified as work that comes in plus mass flow rate H1, that's equal to mass flow rate H2. And this equation will work for compressors, pumps, and fans. All right, this is the equation I need when working with those engineering devices. This one, this, well, I, that I, I actually don't know how to pronounce that, but it's the valve, finally, and we're going to develop the equation for that one as well. So the valves are even easier, one of the easiest uh, engineering devices to work with. So the, the pretty much they are any kind of flow res, uh, restricting devices that cause a significant pressure drop in the fluid. Okay, that's the most important thing. H2 is equal to H1. If I keep developing the equation, you know that enthalpy is equal to internal energy times uh, or plus uh, pressure times a, spe a specific volume. Same thing coming in or coming out. Okay. What do we know about the valve is that the ray of Q is equal to zero. They don't produce any work. Delta PE is close to zero. Delta key E is also close to zero. So if I keep solving the equation, I have that mass flow rate that multiplies H1 plus KE plus PE is equal to mass flow rate H2 plus KE plus PE. All right. Well, like you know, mass flow rate are the same. I can cancel them out. This will cancel. This will cancel with these two. And at the end, I get that H1 is close or equals to H2. And this guy is kilojoules per kilograms. Just remember that enthalpy is equal to internal energy plus PB. Let's just note how we've been using this equation from chapter, I mean, since chapter number two, it's just amazing, okay? Cool, moving to the next engineering device. We have the mixing chambers. And I think that's the last one. So. Oh no, we have the missing chambers and also I think we have the heat exchangers. Okay, mixing chambers are very simple. In engineering applications, the section where the mixing process takes place is commonly referred as mixing chambers, which is here, this is where the mix. Uh, the mixing chamfer does not have to be a distinct chamfer, an ordinary T elbow, Y elbow in a shower, for example, serve as a mixing chamber uh, for the cooling hot water stream. So pretty much a, music, a mixing chamber will be a device that will utilize to mix different fluids or, or to mix two different currents of, of fluids, okay? The conservation of energy is super simple. The conservation of energy um, analysis is simple to do. So what we need to know about this, it's that um, Q is close to zero. They don't produce work. It's also close to zero. My delta key e is close to zero. Delta P e is also close to zero. What else? Super simple. So energy that comes in should be equal to the energy that comes out. So if I have this equation, at the end, what I have is that the mass flow rate 1 H1. So this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So mass flow rate 1 H1 plus mass flow rate 2 H2 will be equals to 
mass flow rate 3 h3 okay it's simple as that but if i keep developing let me just write the equation again one more time so we have something like this This is one, this is two, and this guy is three. So pretty much what I had was energy that comes in. It's equal to the energy that comes out. Therefore, I get mass flow rate one, H1, plus mass flow rate two, H2. It's equals to mass flow rate three, H3. And this is the general equation for mixing chambers. What is important about this, guys? Sometimes you're gonna have a mixing chamber with four, two entrants and two exits, or probably three entrants and one exit. That's when you need to be worried about, okay? Just use as a general equation that energy that comes in, it's equal to energy that comes out. And pretty much the mass multiplied the enthalpy will tell you exactly the energy that is going through this current, okay? All right, moving on to the next one. And final device is heat exchangers. Okay, let me find my notes. Perfect. So heat exchangers are devices where two moving fluid streams exchange heat without mixing. Heat exchangers are widely used in various industries and they come in various designs. So this picture right here is one of the designs. So you have a hot fluid coming through this pipe and then you have a cold fluid coming through the outside so as you know the heat transfer from you know from one fluid to another you know and those transmission of heat will be given by materials and different things so pretty much we we work in the industry with a lot of different things a lot of different um Heat exchangers, you know, in your car you have one is what keeps your car in a in a in a temperature that can work uh, with no problems. Um, you can also see it in you know. There's so many applications for heat exchangers. That's what I'm trying to say, and you're gonna see that in multiple engineering systems. Not only your car, but you know, multiple. You have no idea how much you're gonna see it. So. What happened with the heat exchangers? What do we know about them? They don't produce work. Okay, so this is equals to zero. Delta PE is close to zero too. Delta PE is close to zero as well. What else? They're usually adiabatic, but that will depend. Okay, this is close to zero. One the systems Sorry, I was just typing. So Q will be equal to zero when the system is taking as entire heat exchange. Exchanger, sorry. When you take the, the whole heat exchanger, then Q will be equal to zero. How so? I'll take a look at this. So this guy right here is pretty much my heat exchanger. So you have water coming right here and water coming out right here. 25 Celsius. Uh, right here is 15 Celsius, 300 kPa. So you have the pipe that goes right here, and the pipe has refrigerant coming through here and refrigerant coming out with other properties. So what do we do with this? So my whole system will be the whole heat exchanger completed. And the only thing that I need to take into consideration would be, you know, the things that crosses the boundaries. So, if I take this at my as my system, the question you need to ask yourself, is the heat crossing those boundaries? The answer is no. And that's why heat is equal to zero. But let's say your system, it's gonna be 
the pipe, oh, then that will be different because we are transferring heat from and to the two fluids, right? And when that happens, the heat will cross these boundaries and therefore you have to take into consideration the heat in your equation. But as a general equation, we always, I mean, most of the time we, we take the system as a whole heat exchanger. So in that case, particularly, we don't need to worry about the heat coming in or out of the system, okay? So, well, like I said, let me just delete this guy. All right, so moving with explanation. So like I told you, uh, there's no work interactions. There's no heat interactions. They're usually adiabatic. The whole heat exchanger, again, I'm repeating that. Delta Ke is close to zero. Delta Pe is close to zero. And I'm just gonna use the equation, energy that comes in, it's equals minus energy that comes out, it's equals to the change. Because it's a steady flow, this guy is zero, and I get that energy that comes in, it's equals to the energy that comes out. So, we know, and we're gonna take this example, this picture. So one, two are just water and three and four, they're just refrigerant. Everything that comes in minus everything that comes out will be equal to zero. So what's coming here? It's coming water. So mass flow rate of the water times enthalpy one. That's coming in. What else is coming in? It's coming this guy right here plus mass flow rate of the refrigerant times H3. It's equal to everything that comes out. So let's go with the water first. This guy, number two. So that will be mass flow rate of the water, enthalpy two, plus what else is coming out? This guy right here. So mass flow rate of the refrigerant, H4. And that's the equation. So again, I'm just gonna say the same thing as I said in the mixing chambers. Just start with this equation. Energy that comes in, it's equals to energy that comes out or the rate of energy that comes in is equal to the energy that comes out. If you want to develop this equation a little bit more, you could also say that the mass flow rate of the water it's equals to H1, I'm sorry, mass flow rate of the water multiplies H1 minus H2, and this is equals to the mass flow rate of the refrigerant that multiplies H4 minus H3. And I'm just simplifying more the equation. And the more information or more data you have, the easier it's gonna be for you. All right, so with that, we finish chapter number five. I really like this chapter, guys. This is the baseline for chapter number six and seven uh, as we are getting more into systems and, and processes that involve more than one engineering device. For homework number five, you're gonna see just exercises related with one engineering device particularly, but when we move into chapter number six, then I'm gonna start explaining uh, how to work with multiple devices. Let's say a pump, uh, uh, heat exchangers, a valve, things like that. So I want you to spend the whole chapter number five just focusing on learning uh, how the engineering devices will work, okay? What are the equations that I need in order to work with these devices? That's the key. If you learn that, then you will not have any problems for chapter number six and seven and thermodynamics too. Because let me tell you something, this chapter is pretty much what we use in thermodynamics too. Okay, in thermo one, we deal with four engineering devices. In thermodynamics two, we deal with, I don't know, eight devices or something like that. So one exam for thermo two would be probably three hours, close to that. 
or only one exercise. It's just, it, it is funny and hard. All right, guys, so that was chapter number five. Again, go through uh, the book. It's important that you read the book. It's not only what I'm explaining on the presentation. There is more information in the book. Um, I will be posting uh, my notes, you know, uh, the resume of the chapter that I always do for every for each one of the chapters. So now you have my presentation. You have the explanation of the presentation. I hope that's enough uh, for you to understand or get an idea what these engineering devices are and how do they work and how they work. Um, have an amazing rest of your day and go into your homework now. Thank you.